Owing to mutation, the genetic makeup of a cell population can display diversity instead of a pure genotype characteristic of a well-defined species. In these situations, quasi-species models are used to think about genotypic distributions. These slides outline how eigenvalue eigenvector analysis can be used to study the green box in the paper, Quasi-Species Made Simple, by authors Bull, Myers, and Lachman, in PLOS Computational Biology from 2005. Walk through the slides, work through the green box on your own with pencil and paper, and then play this video again for review. We will first describe the dynamics of the model system before outlining its solution in terms of eigenvectors and eigenvalues. Mutation can generate a variety of alleles from an initially genetically homogeneous population. This model tracks the populations of cells with either of two alleles. At an initial time, there are N1 cells with allele A1 and N2 cells with allele A2. What are the populations in the future after a duration delta t has elapsed? In order to calculate the dynamics of the populations, we specify microscopic dynamics at the single cell level. Consider this cell with allele 1. By the time delta t has elapsed, it may have generated progeny. When we say that cells with allele 1 can replicate, we mean that for each cell labeled A1 at time t, we expect to have W1 cells at time t plus delta t. Here the number W1 is 3. Note, however, that not all of the W1 of these resulting cells are blue. Owing to mutation, some cells might be orange, having allele 2 instead of allele 1. Thus, we subtract from the W1 cells at time t plus delta t a fraction mu1, that is orange, and these cells actually become part of the population of cells with allele 2 at time t plus delta t. We've been looking at progeny and mutants resulting from a single cell. Our table is quantified in terms of a single cell. Suppose each one of the cells in the cell population N1 performs these same processes according to these same parameters. Then the contribution to the population N1 at later time t plus delta t owing to the faithful survival and reproduction originating in the population N1 at earlier time t is N1 of t, the number of cells initially available to do something, multiplied by W1 times quantity 1 minus mu1, the net effectiveness on a per cell basis of being able to survive and reproduce without mutation. In the same way, the portion of the population of cells with allele A2 at time t plus delta t owing to survival and reproduction with mutation of cells initially having allele A1 is the size of the source population N1 of t multiplied by W1 times mu1. Consider this highlighted orange cell. It can also survive and reproduce. We say that A2 replicates, meaning that for a given A2 at time t, we expect to have W2 cells at a future time t plus delta t. Owing to mutation, some of these W2 cells have allele A1. So for each orange cell at time t, we expect to have W2 times a mutation fraction mu3 blue cells at a later time t plus delta t. Some of the W2 cells at time t plus delta t corresponding to an initial orange cell at time t may be mutants that now have another allele, for example some sort of allele A3 not explicitly tracked in this model. For simplicity, assume that these kinds of mutations are irreversible so that any cellular population lost to allele A3 and so forth never returns either to A2 or to A1. These mutants might as well be considered dead. We use mu2 to denote the fraction of the W2 cells that have mutants, either mutants with allele 1 or mutants with another allele neglected by this model. The fraction of the W2 cells that has an allele other than A1 or A2 at time t plus delta t is mu2 minus mu3. We have been highlighting the dynamics associated with one of the initially orange cells. Let's say that each of the initially orange cells behaves in the same way. Then a contribution to the orange population N2 at t plus delta t can be calculated by multiplying the number of orange cells initially available to do something, that's N2 of t, 
by their effectiveness in contributing to the orange population that's w2 times 1 minus mu2. Orange cells are not as effective at contributing to their own future populations if the mutation fraction mu2 is high. A contribution to the blue population n1 of t plus delta t can be identified as the product of the population of orange cells available to do something at time t multiplied by their effectiveness in generating blue cells w2 mu3. You can do finger exercises to confirm that dynamics of the system can be expressed using matrices. The authors summarized the microscopic model we have just animated using a flowchart like the one at the top of this page. The heights of the blue and orange bars indicate that the author studied the particular example in which w1 exceeded w2. An initial blue cell would correspond at time t plus delta t to more cells than would be expected to originate from an initial orange cell. The authors call the w's the fitnesses of blue and orange cells, so in this sense blue is more fit than orange. In addition to faithful survival and reproduction, blue cells can turn orange, and orange cells can turn either blue or some other color not explicitly tracked by the model. Now that we have described the model, we are allowed to solve for its dynamics. From here on out, we will show at most snapshots of key, knee-jerk, memorized arithmetic when we say we are doing eigenvalue eigenvector analysis. To review these calculations conceptually, please review the videos introducing linear algebra. We write an equation we can solve to find the eigenvalues. Remember that the minus lambdas are attached to the main diagonal elements and that the so-called off-diagonal elements form this product. Foiling and rearranging into descending powers of lambda, we obtain a quadratic equation whose pair of roots can be determined using the quadratic formula. These are the two eigenvalues of the system, one corresponding to the plus in front of the square root and the other corresponding to the minus. Using the eigenvalues and the matrix, for example using the northern row of the square matrix, we can write an equation that determines the relationship between n1 and n2 for each eigenvector associated with the eigenvalues lambda plus and lambda minus. Algebra is fun. The coefficients of the eigenvectors occur in this pair of ratios, where we say a pair of ratios because we can take either the plus or the minus in front of the square root. In this slide, we analyze the steady-state properties of the population composition. Say that the fitness of the blue cells is w1 equals 3, and that the fitness of orange cells is w2 equals 2. The blue cells are more fit. Suppose that orange cells can mutate, with a mutation fraction mu3 equals 0 0.005 toward the blue allele and a mutation fraction mu2 minus mu3 to alleles not explicitly tracked by the model. The mutation fractions to the left and to the right are together a total mutation fraction mu2 for the initially orange cells. Suppose that the mutation fraction from the blue cells toward the orange cells is twice the overall mutation fraction of the orange cells. Hold all parameters fixed except for mu2 and by consequence mu1. We can explore the behavior of the system at different values of mu2. The lambda plus and minus expressed in terms of horrible gobbledygook and square root stuff correspond to these plots. Lambda plus always floats above lambda minus. We can study the eigenvectors using a plot of the ratio of the n2 population to the n1 population for various values of mu2. Remember that the eigenvector associated with the largest eigenvalue dominates the dynamics of the system unless we are in a special situation in which the initial condition of the system can be constructed using linear combinations only of other eigenvectors. The eigenvalue lambda plus dominates for all these values of the mutation fraction mu2. So the dominant eigenvector is the one whose ratio of n2 component to n1 component is plotted in the yellow eigendemographics curve. For small mutation fractions mu2, the ratio of the population of orange cells to the population of blue cells is close to zero, 
meaning that the steady state population is almost purely blue cells, those with allele A1. When mutation fractions are small, the raw fitnesses of the cells can indicate which cell type will take over the population. This is survival of the fittest. For large values of mutation fraction mu2, we are cranking up the flow from blue cells to orange cells and also from orange cells out to the pink X. The yellow eigendemographics curve ascends, indicating enrichment in the population of orange cells as compared to the population of blue cells. As we turn on the waterfall from blue to orange, the orange population can become large compared to the blue population, even if the blue population has greater fitness. One of the lessons of quasi-species models is that dominance in the population is determined not merely by raw rates of making progeny or so-called fitness. One must ask whether cells are breeding true. If this is your first time through the video, you can skim the cited paper, develop your own outlines, notes, derivations, and calculations, whatever you find helpful. Then, after you have developed familiarity, watch the video again and see whether you can address in a one to two hour sitting the questions that are about to appear. If this is your first time through the video, press stop now. Why is it inappropriate to consider values of mutation fraction mu2 greater than 0 0.5? What happens when mu3, the fraction of back mutation from orange to blue cells, vanishes? Can you use the analysis in this slide deck to study that case? The ratio of the population of orange cells to blue cells in the eigenvector associated with the eigenvalue lambda minus is negative. For this eigenvector, the population of orange cells would be negative if, for example, the population of blue cells were positive. A negative cell population is non-physical. Nonetheless, we retain this eigenvector in order to analyze the dynamics of physical populations. Why? Is it okay for eigenvectors to have negative components? Scan through the green box on the cited paper. Use the cited paper or your favorite resource to distinguish between error catastrophe and extinction catastrophe. In this video, we outlined the microscopic picture in a simplified quasi-species model. We then used eigenvector eigenvalue analysis to study the long-term steady-state genotypic population composition of the model for various values of mutation fraction. We emphasized that dominance in a population is determined not merely by fitness alone. One must ask whether cells are breeding true.